Welcome back to Wayne TV. I'm Joel Gilley, and I'm joined by Sherrod and Jan. Sherrod, you're with the SBA, Jan with FEMA. Thank you guys so much for coming in today. We, of course, just dealt with Hurricane Florence uh, just here a couple years after Hurricane Matthew. So we're right in that recovery process again mm -hmm. uh, and wanted to bring you guys in. Thank you so much for the time because now that we're in that recovery process, uh, we'll start with, with FEMA. What do people need to know about FEMA resources? Okay, well, as you know, we just opened a disaster recovery center here in Goldsboro for Wayne County, although you can register at any disaster recovery center. It doesn't have to be the one in, for your county. And we have 20 different disaster recovery centers throughout the state oh, right wow. now. We're building out more all the time, and we have some temporary mobile ones that mm -hmm. move around from county to county. But currently, we have one that just opened yesterday here in Goldsboro. So that's what we want to make people aware of. If um, anyone who sustained damage to their primary residence or a renter uh, who sustained damage to their personal property may be eligible for federal assistance, but they have to register first. So what we ask people to do is to first file a claim with their insurance company, that be that flood insurance or homeowners insurance. Then go to a disaster recovery center, or you can do it by telephone and online, either way. But the disaster recovery center has some added benefits, which mm -hmm. we'll get to, and register for assistance. Okay. And at the disaster recovery center, you find lots of different resources, not just FEMA, but you find the nonprofit organizations that may be there to fill in the gaps where yeah. FEMA or the Small Business Administration couldn't fill in. And you also find the Small Business Administration. Exactly. <laughs> so it's all, it's a one-stop shop pretty much. It is, exactly. <laughs> That's the way we sell it. It's That's a one-stop shop. And we do want to talk about that uh, that new center that is open. It's at the T.C. Coley Building here in Goldsboro, uh, the former W.A. Foster facility. Uh, and the hours on that Monday through Wednesday, is it 9 to 5? I believe. 9, nine, to, nine seven to 7. PM. 9 to 7. That's even better. Um, and so what do people know about S need to know about SBA going into this recovery process? Well, to learn a little bit about SBA, some people have heard about us, uh, Small Business Administration. Um, however, in times of disaster, we offer, um, in addition to helping businesses out, we also help our homeowners and renters out with uh, loans, disaster loans that we provide for them during this time. And some people who have applied for FEMA many times may be referred over to Small Business Administration or they may receive a letter in the, in the mail that refers them to Small Business Administration. And we don't want them to be alarmed when they receive that letter. We want them to come and uh, to one of our centers, our recovery centers, and fill out the application or go online at uh, sba.gov to apply for the loans. Um, these loans are uh, very low interest rate loans. Our homeowners um, have loans as low as 2%. Our businesses have low, low rates as low as 3.675. And nonprofit, we also assist those with nonprofit organizations, and those rates are as low as 2.5%. So. And also, the other thing is, is that it's not just loan. It can be for working capital. Talk a little bit about what all that loan is for as well. Exactly. For our, for our business, um, small business owners, uh, we do provide what is called an economic, economic injury loan. Another way of saying it is a working capital loan. Yeah. So uh, if your business has been stalled or it has hesitated through the storms, something has impacted it in some shape or form as a result of the storm, uh, we are able to provide assistance, or loan assistance, to help you through that time of recovery uh, during that moment. That's great. And getting back to um, homeowners sure. in that situation, because often people don't realize the SBA mm -hmm. works with individuals. People generally, because of the name, they think of it as business. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yes, they do, in fact, work with homeowners. And anyone who has a mortgage knows 2% is oh, really, that's a really, really good low. rate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, you exactly. You can't beat that Absolutely. anywhere. Absolutely. But, um, but one of the things that's important is that often people don't want a loan. Mm -hmm. They want a grant, mm -hmm. which is understandable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But to qualify for a grant, you still have to go through the process of applying for a Small Business Administration loan. Okay. Now, you may get approved for that loan, and you don't have to take exactly. it. Exactly. But nonetheless, You've got to jump through the hoops yeah. and mm -hmm. fill out the forms and go through the process just in case you do qualify for FEMA help. If you don't apply for SBA help, you get booted right out of the entire federal system. So it's very important. So. <laughs> you need yes. to apply. 
Uh, when people are, are getting stuff together, they're going to come visit the application center. What do they need to bring with them? What, what kind of things do they need to be thinking about? They'll have to prove that um, the, their home was their primary residence. We don't cover secondary residences. We don't cover vacation homes. So they will need to have a driver's license will suffice. Um, but in lieu of a driver's license, it could be uh, utility bills, okay. something like that, that shows your, your permanent address. And then in the ideal world, if you have any insurance, would be at homeowners or flood insurance, if you can bring that paperwork with you. Okay. It is difficult at times for people when they go through disaster, often those kinds of things get lost in, mm -hmm. the, in the shuffle and your whole life is turned upside down and totally disorganized. So that information, eventually that documentation is going to have to be supplied. If you can bring it with you on the first visit, that's ideal. Yeah. But but otherwise, it'll get filled in later on. We do want to reiterate that, that you know, if you do have insurance, you, you need to file a claim with the insurance first and then, then do the, the FEMA application, correct? It doesn't have to be done that way, but it is more efficient. Okay. So That's we recommend good. that, yes. Um, anything else that we need to talk about? I know that, you know, we, we heard from the SBA earlier talking about you know, we're just two years after Matthew. There are people still paying off SBA loans. That right. There's some extra benefits for, for deferred payments and things with Hurricane Florence. Is that correct? Right now, we do have, for those who have been impacted by previous storms, we do have a deferment uh, that's taking place. And I would strongly encourage you, if you fall in that ca category, to reach out to SBA and see what those uh, that time frame is for yeah. deferment. Well, that's kind of another nice benefit to people because, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so many businesses got hit during, uh, during Matthew and now they're having to deal with it all over again, exactly. unfortunately. Many people don't even um, understand exactly what is covered with the FEMA grants. Yeah. Um, for example, um, we determine if the home is habitable. If it is not habitable, then our goal is to bring it back to what we call safe, secure, and functional. Sure. Okay. Safe, secure, and functional. <laughs> But what that really means is we don't redecorate a house, we sure. don't bring it back uh, and make the person completely whole again. Yeah. We can't do that. Mm -hmm. If they don't have flood insurance, then what we can do is make it habitable, which means get it clean, replace items that are necessary for living. For example, perhaps it would be your furnace, mm -hmm. um, appliances, and it may be a bed, mm -hmm. <coughs> excuse me, our goal is to get it where you can live in your home. Yeah. And then in terms Fee of... Fee not buying the Egyptian cotton sheets and all that, <laughs> you know? <laughs> no, I'm sorry to yeah. say we're not. It's understandable. But, but it's taxpayer dollars. Yep. And you have to realize that. Absolutely. And so we have to be good stewards of taxpayer dollars. Now, with regards to renters, they may qualify for um, personal belongings, um, maybe furnishings, maybe clothing, um, an automobile. If it's your only source of that transportation, if that's your primary automobile and it was damaged in the flood, then that may very well be yeah. eligible as well. So the, those are the types of things, but our goal is to get people back into their homes. Exactly. For more information from both sides, um, what's the best place for people? I mean, of course, they can stop by the application center, but good website addresses that people need to be checking out for information? That's easy, disasterassistance.gov. Okay. Disasterassistance.gov, you can register online there. And that's probably the fastest way, but I, I personally find the value in going mm. to the Disaster oh, Recovery absolutely. Center because you're talking one-on-one -on -one yep. with someone. Mm -hmm. Or there's the 800 number, FEMA's 800 number is 1-800-621-3362. Okay. Or 621 FEMA is an easy way to remember it. But again, we really encourage using that Disaster Recovery Center, which is only there three days, mm -hmm. Monday through yeah. Wednesday mm -hmm. here in Goldsboro, um, each week indefinitely. Well, and we saw the, the same thing after Hurricane Matthew with all the different recoveries and the, the grants and the buyout programs. The, the same thing for that application center is, you know, it's a lot of paperwork. It's confusing to a lot of right. people. And so, you know, really, you can't stress that enough that honestly, like, you're probably better off going to the application center. These people know they deal with this every day. And uh, plus all the other resources, like the SBA is there and the nonprofit organizations as well. So can't, uh, can't stress that enough. <laughs> I have to say that the people who work in those disaster recovery centers, they know the programs they inside do. out and backwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they do really do make a concerted effort to search out information from that applicant to determine 
every little bit that you are entitled to. That's great. Mm -hmm. And they will work with people to try yeah. and figure out how they can help you be eligible for something. They're not trying to cut corners and say, oh, no, <laughs> we don't want to you know, give her yeah, that. Yeah, they care. They, they care. They really are people who care. And that's what makes them so fast yeah. and fantastic to deal with. Absolutely. I just wanted to add to, you know, ways to, with SBA, ways to apply. Of course, we've mentioned about uh, going to the recovery centers, and that's the primary place uh, that we would ask for, especially when we have them available in areas uh, that have been hard hit. We ask you to go there. But we also uh, have available to you to apply at sba.gov. Okay. And it's a very user-friendly site for homeowners and renters as well as business owners. You click on, on the, when you go to that site, there's a button right there for you. You can click on it and it'll simply walk you through the process. It's a very easy application process. However, if that is a preference for you to go inside to a center to do that application, we would strongly encourage you to do that. Yeah. But I would tell you that, that the website is very user-friendly as well. Right. Or they can call uh, on the phone as well at 1-800-659-2900. Five five, um, and we can send out an application for them to fill out that way. Awesome. I think it's interesting to <coughs> note the SBA at this point in time, mm -hmm. and I don't want to get in your lane, oh, but sure. it says here $153 million has been for the state approved of so wow. far to individuals, right? Individuals and businesses. And businesses for the state of North Carolina. $153 million. Yeah. And FEMA has approved $99 million, wow. and that's directly to homeowners and renters. That's money that went right in their pocket. Mm -hmm. That's which great. Helps the whole recovery process. Oh, absolutely. Because when they have money to start their recovery, it spurs business growth mm -hmm. and, and puts money, fuses money back into the economy. It does. For people who are, are applying, what is the typical turnaround time before they hear something? Because I know that's a question people are always <laughs> talking about. Um, and, and I know it's probably different for every case, but what, what kind of can, what can <coughs> people think when they're going in? Well, the first thing that happens when a person makes application for help, okay, for assistance from FEMA, is that they're going to get a call within one week, usually. It's very, very fast from the inspector. And they make an appointment, the inspector goes out to their home. The inspection lasts anywhere from 30 minutes to 45 minutes or an hour, depending on the size of their home and yeah. the extent of the damage. But the inspector will go in and determine if the home is habitable or not. And then that application then goes into the system. And then after that, then it's a little bit longer process. But, but even so, generally speaking, if there are no glitches in the application, and when glitches happen, mm -hmm. it's usually something minor, <laughs> like they didn't mm -hmm. sign on the right line or they didn't yeah. get out the I or cross the T, whatever. But, um, but it's just a matter of weeks that, that people get a determination letter. And that tells them if they qualify or what they qualify for. Now that determination letter, it's important um, to read all the way down through it. It'll go into that you have to apply for an SBA loan. Mm -hmm. It will go into details like, um, like an appeal process. But before you even start anything like that, it's ideal to find out why you got the determination that you did. Mm -hmm. And again, back to the Disaster Recovery Center, it's a good place to do that. You take the letter in and say, What's this all about? Why and why was I denied? If if that's the case. And we've seen some. I'm glad you said that because we've seen some comments, uh, you know, from from people in Wing County saying I got denied. Mm -hmm. I got denied. And you know, I don't know the the specific cases, but you know, there's a good chance that they didn't know that uh, it's just to get it back to safe, secure, in, in a mm -hmm. habitable home, maybe. But that's good that they can take that information into the, the center and try to get a little bit more information. Nine out of ten times, it's something really minor that you need additional documentation or you didn't sign in the proper box or something simple like that. That's great. Most of the time, it's something that they can solve, but those are the people who can really do it. And by the way, also I think worth mentioning, because this is going on here in Wayne County, we have disaster survivor assistance teams. These are teams of people who go out door to door, knocking on doors, searching out people who have mm. damage to their home. Wow. And, and they can register you for FEMA help right, right there, there on the spot. That's great. And um, it's important to know that they really are FEMA people, that they're not some imposter, mm -hmm. and they'll always be wearing a badge um, and their FEMA garb. and, and if you're still questioning whether that person is legit or not, you can call that 
that 800-621 FEMA number that I gave to you because they will be able to verify that they're in the area. Yeah. But they are in Wayne County right now going door to door. That's awesome. This has been super informative, uh, and and I know that you know we we've seen comments of people that have been have been reaching out to FEMA and stuff like that. So we're really excited to have this center open, uh, and think it's going to be great for for the residents. Mm -hmm. You were going to add something else? Well, I was just going to say the turnaround time. You had mentioned yeah. asked about the turnaround time. It, you know, coming to SBA if once they do that process, you know, you know, providing that they register with FEMA. When they do that application with SBA, we're looking at a two to three turnaround time typically okay. um, for processing. Um, however, you know, there's case by case and it may be sooner, or, you know, a little longer, yeah. but the process is about two to three weeks. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things about um, FEMA flood insurance, the National Flood Insurance Program, and we always like to put a plug in for it because people mm -hmm. should have flood insurance. People in Wayne County? <laughs> Everybody should have flood insurance. I shouldn't joke, but it's like, you know, every two years <laughs> yeah, now, where right. I mean, it's, it's really a, a smart thing to have now. Right, right. And, and I think people are starting to recognize yeah. that. Um, we have, FEMA has paid out $153 million wow. in flood claims. But one of the cool things about the flood insurance is that unlike, and I don't want to bash insurance companies, but you don't, everybody knows that experience of going to your insurance company with a claim and they stall and they stall and they stall for weeks or months mm -hmm. before you ever find out mm -hmm. what's going on or get a payment. With flood insurance, they may are capable of making advance payments. So wow. they were putting money out immediately. As soon as somebody was making a claim, they're putting money out back in people's pockets so they could start that recovery yeah. process. That's great. This has been super informative. Of course, we've got the, uh, the application center that's open Monday through Wednesday. Uh, and I'm gonna mess this up again. What were the times? One more time. I don't want Monday mess through it. Wednesday, nine to seven. Nine to seven, uh, and it's at the T.C. Coley Building, uh, former W.A. Foster Center here in Goldsboro. Uh, is there anything else that that we left out that we need to hit? I think this has been super informative. We're here to help. Yeah, <laughs> and so which is great. Take advantage of it. We're here to help. And it doesn't matter if you're a, a homeowner, a, a resident, a business owner, there are resources available for you. So seek those resources out. You can visit both the respective websites or like we said, the best thing just to stop by the application center. Thank y'all so much for your time today. Thank we really you. appreciate it. And uh, you know, knock on wood, you won't have to spend too much yeah. more time in Wayne County and you, you can stay away for a couple <laughs> years. We appreciate you being here, but <laughs> not <laughs> in these circumstances. Exactly. exactly. Thank y'all so much. Thank you. Thank you.